Hi, um, I'm Ian Creighton Chambers. I'm the creative director and the founding trustee of the Bounce Alzheimer's Therapy Foundation. We are a charity that's a health, health and well-being charity, and we're promoting table tennis as an incredible therapy for early onset Alzheimer's. Now, um, I don't know how much of you know about table tennis. It originated in India in the late 1890s, and two British army officers had a date to play tennis, but it was too hot. So they decided to create a game they could play in the shade. They took a veranda table, put some books across the middle, got the lids off some cigar boxes, cut some champagne corks down to orbs, and they played a game they called Whiff Waff. And when they went on leave, they took it back to Britain and it became one of the most popular parlour games in Britain, in Victorian England. Now, uh, Slazinger registered Whiff Waff in 1900, but a very enterprising young man called John Jacks patented a game called Ping Pong in 1901. And he lived in London, in Holborn, and our charity is actually in the very building where he patented ping pong, which is kind of nice. Now, 1901 was quite a seminal year because an unconnected event happened in Germany where there was a famous uh, psychiatrist and uh, neuropathologist called Alois Alzheimer's, and he was referred a patient uh, called August Dieter, and she was a woman in her 50s who was exhibiting some very unusual symptoms. And um, she was placed in the Frankfurt Asylum where Alzheimer's worked. And he became fascinated by this woman and studied her over five years uh, until she died, um, sadly, at, at the age of 56. He then spent time um, studying her brain, which he produced an autopsy of, um, and he discovered the amyloid plaque and the tangles that invade the brain, which are indicative of Alzheimer's, which obviously it wasn't called then. Um, he prepared a paper on this quite extensively. He worked on it, and he was invited to present this to a group of very important psychiatrists from all over Europe. And there he was at this seminar giving his speech about Alzheimer's. Unfortunately, nobody was paying attention um, and nobody was interested. And it transpired, the reason was that the next speaker was going to be talking about compulsive masturbation and everybody was waiting <laughs> desperately for that talk and, and poor old Alzheimer's went off and uh, was quite dumbfounded. But anyway, he persevered. And um, he, sadly, unfortunately, he died quite young. He was 56 when he died. Um, but the, his mentor uh, called the research after him. And it was taken up uh, amazingly more effectively in America than it was in, in uh, Europe. And um, simultaneously, again synchronistically, John Jacks took his ping pong to America about the same time. So it was this kind of parallel lives going on between table tennis and, uh, and uh, Alzheimer's therapy and uh, treatment. Now, what happened was that if we, if we go into the late 1980s, there was a gentleman in, uh, in America, a Londoner called Sir Arthur Gilbert, and his wife, Rosalind, uh, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. But he discovered that when they played table tennis together, her cognitive abilities improved, her demeanor improved, and he was quite impressed by this. And he was a very wealthy man, a philanthropist, so he commissioned the Mayo Clinic to do a body of research. And they discovered that, yes, table tennis is very effective, with somebody with Alzheimer's. It was a small study, but it was picked up by two neuroscientists in Japan. And they did a very big clinical study with lots of, of Alzheimer's 
patients, and they used MRI scans and what have you. And they discovered that when somebody plays table tennis for 15 to 20 minutes, at least five more portions of their brain light up simultaneously, which is quite amazing. And they called table tennis the world's number one brain sport. Uh, and it became uh, quite passionate for them. And also, it then bounced back to America. And Sir Arthur Gilbert actually set up the world's first table tennis center for people with Alzheimer's. And that still runs now very effectively. Uh, now, I worked in Los Angeles. I um, was aware of that. I'd also worked in Tokyo, and I'd picked up the amazing thing that the, the, these two countries had, had seen the correlation between table tennis and Alzheimer's as a treatment. And I thought this was something that the UK could do with. Uh, I worked uh, in the arts. Uh, my father was a very eminent physician, got knighted for his work in medicine, wanted me to be a surgeon or at least a doctor. Um, but I went to the arts and was a big disappointment. My, my sister, being an endearing suck-up, not only went into medicine, but also married a doctor. But there you go. But, <laughs> so when I retired, I foolishly um, thought, well, maybe this is, I could make amends to the old man uh, and do something worthwhile. Um, and there's a great uh, expression, I think, originated in Wall Street, which said, um, it's not dog eats dog that's the problem in this town. It's dog won't return other dogs' phone calls. So people still return my phone calls. So what I did was I talked to lots of individuals in lots of different areas. And I thought, well, if, if we're going to introduce table tennis as a therapy for Alzheimer's, let's look at how we can improve the concept, the equipment. So I contacted uh, the University of Stirling and Professor June Andrews, and she was amazing. Um, I, they have this uh, dementia uh, development center up there, and it's world famous. And I said, look, what color should my table be? What, color? What do you mean? So she suddenly, you know, immediately got her, her head around the whole concept, which was great. And so we started developing, this is the Mark II, um, the Mark I was different, but um, we decided on a white playing surface because that gives a placebo clinical effect, which the players with dementia find quite comforting and quite inspiring. The panels obviously keep the balls in play longer for the attention span, but they're also very effective for interactive technology. Now, you can play off the panels which gives another dimension to the game. It increases spatial awareness, peripheral vision, hand-to-eye coordination. But what we can do is we can project onto the panels. Now, in the early stages of Alzheimer's, we, we all know about personality change and memory loss. But a lot of the symptoms are to do with the visual cortex. And one of the problems is contrast. If you have a white switch on a white wall, it's invisible. Give somebody with early onset Alzheimer's a bowl of rice and a white bowl, it's an empty bowl, they won't eat it. They also have a problem with perspective. Things appear in different places. They lose colors, certain colors in spectrums disappear or meld. So what we tried to do was introduce into the, into the play um, various things like the, the orange ball on the white playing surface is probably the best form of contrast for the condition. We use balloons, uh, orange balloons, for people who are more infirmed. We can take the net away and push the balls backwards and forwards. People can play sitting in wheelchairs. And also, as I say, that we use the panels for projecting different uh, images. One of the biggest problems initially with Alzheimer's is reading a clock face. And the most difficult time, interestingly, is 10 past 11. And it, this is used in diagnosis. So you get somebody that may have Alzheimer's, you get them to draw a circle and ask them to draw the hands at 10 past 11. And 
it's a major challenge. That particular time is the most difficult for some reason. So what we do, we put clock faces on the panels and say, play off 20 to 12, play off quarter past three, play off 10 past 11. So you're getting them, pushing the brain all the time. Um, we're, what we're doing with the table is we're donating these tables to care homes, community centres and hospitals. And it's turning out to be incredibly successful because mm -hmm. we're, we've, um, once we developed the table with the University of Stirling, we then got a neuroscientist team from King's College London to uh, work with us with players with Alzheimer's. So we evolved the table uh, with their input. And we found that people with Alzheimer's found it very stimulating and it reduced cognitive decline quite measurably. And it also, apparently, according to the Japanese research, um, it delays the onset of symptoms. But it's, it's aerobic, it's socially interactive, and it really works. And we've had activities staff in care homes in tears because the results we've had with some of the residents or some of the people coming to community centres. An interesting thing we discovered is that if when we introduce ambidexterity into the gameplay, this had a major effect. We, we, found, the, it, we found this out. We had one uh, player called Richard who was, had quite advanced Alzheimer's. He liked to play table tennis. He wasn't very good, but he enjoyed it. Um, but he had to have a carer on either side uh, because of his balance. We introduced ambidexterity and got him to play with a less dominant hand for at least half the time. And after about four or five weeks of regular play, it reorientated his balance. It was amazing. And he could stand unaided, and his confidence improved amazingly. So um, we're exploring all sorts of things like that. We get data feedback from uh, the various care providers who have the tables. We've now got eight hospitals who want to take the table, which is great. The Bethlehem especially uh, wants two. Uh, we're putting one in the Maudsley next month. Um, and we, we work, as I say, with different uh, organisations across the country. Uh, we're putting one into the Royal Chelsea Hospital for the pensioners so that they can play table tennis. The Chelsea pensioners, there are quite a few with dementia. Um, and uh, as I say, we're, we're, we're very fortunate to have um, various organisations supporting us. I managed to get Tamasu Butterfly, who are one of the world's largest manufacturers of table tennis equipment, to work with me to, uh, to produce this. Um, we're, we're working on the Mark III, which, which we're going to put motion sensors into the playing surface, so when the ball passes over, uh, a voice will say, good shot, well done, so we just keep the focus on. Um, we're Table Tennis England's designated charity, and we work with London Sport and Sport England. Um, one of the interesting things that we're, we're trying out now is a volunteer programme with schools, colleges, and universities. So when a care home, community centre, or hospital takes one of the tables, we link in with a local educational establishment and get um, young people to volunteer to go and play table tennis with those uh, with dementia, and that's proving quite exciting. Uh, we're, um, as I say, we're putting uh, a table into the Royal Chelsea Hospital, and we've got the Queen's Household Cavalry volunteering to go and play table tennis with pensions, which is great. And um, when we put the table in next month, the house, the mass bands of the Household Cavalry are going to come and play uh, for us uh, at the event. Um, we're uh, We've got uh, Halifax on board, I'm glad to say. Um, they're sponsoring 11 tables in London, working with us and London Sport. Uh, so that's, that's working rather well. Um, we also, uh, because we, we donate these, we uh, have an arts programme that raises funding uh, so that we can pay for the tables. Because of my background in the arts, I've, it's quite exciting for me to to carry on in that realm. Um, what I thought we would do was uh, initially put together a concatenate of portraits 
of 55 iconic personalities, all of whom uh, succumbed to Alzheimer's. And it's quite moving, this. We, we, we've got um, some amazing people who shaped the 20th and 21st century who have succumbed to Alzheimer's. Politicians, musicians, writers, uh, sports personalities, actors. And when you see the, the exhibition, it, it, it really reduces the stigma for people who feel that maybe they've been singled out because of their social or economic background or their intellect. Um, so, you know, your grandmother has Alzheimer's, but so did Iris Murdoch, so did uh, Margaret Thatcher, you know. Um, um, we, we've, we've managed to, by using the art, raise quite a bit of money, and, and that really, really helps. So it's, it's, it's a, a perfect circle. We're also introducing a merchandise and licensing program. Um, we have a, another table. Uh, we, I didn't think we had enough room to get that one as well. It's a circular table. Uh, it takes six players. It's really cool. Um, it's a socially interactive table. Um, and you can have carers and people with dementia play. You can have people sitting play. But we also, um, there's this really cool board game called Call to Mind. Uh, which has been developed with UCL, and it's uh, uh, a nostalgia trigger game, and I was very impressed with it. And so I got these poor people at Call to Mind to develop me a very large version, which I put on a very large circular table, and um, I now have a multifunctional table where people can play table tennis and then put the Call to Mind board game on top, and we can have 12 people playing Call to Mind. And uh, the East Surrey Hospital uh, is so impressed, they're building a garden especially for one of these tables. So we're putting that up. And we're also working with Sport England on This Girl Can program. Um, what we do is we customise the tables for various events. We did one with Beano called uh, Table Dennis, which is quite fun. Um, and Lego donated... 15,000 bricks to the charity, and we got 25 kids to build a Lego table tennis table over uh, two days, and Brian, bless him, had to play it for, for two days at, at Excel um, with great queues of kids wanting to play on the Lego table tennis table. Uh, but it's really, I mean, not for dementia, obviously, but it, it's getting young people into playing table tennis. And... In America, where they do an awful lot of Alzheimer's research, three of the top universities, Yale, Harvard, and Hawaii, all of whom have um, dementia foundations, they've just got together and they've done a, a very comprehensive study of 1,200 children. And frighteningly, they have discovered that those children with the Alzheimer's gene, and it is hereditary, and it appears on four pairs of chromosomes. Those children who have the Alzheimer's gene, by the age of three, by the age of three, can have up to 22% shrinkage of the brain. And that is quite frightening. However, they intimated in the research that exercise intervention can reduce the shrinkage, if not dissipate it completely. And table tennis is obviously the best form of... Uh, exercise intervention. So we put tables into schools, but without mentioning the A word, so that the kids who uh, may have the condition down the road will have the ability to play table tennis as a therapy, but without knowing. And those kids who may become carers in the future will have a skill set which they can fall back on if they need to. It's Because it's drug-free, the NHS love it, um, because they're cash-strapped anyway. So this gives them 10 years of therapy uh, for no cost. Um, we've been very fortunate. Um, I was originally, um, for my sins, uh, on the original committee of Comic Relief, way back when it first started. So I went knocking on their door and I said, hey, I used to be with you guys, you know, this is what I'm doing now. And they said, oh, that's amazing. I think there's only one other guy left from that era. Um, you must remember him, Christopher, I think his name was. Anyway, 
Um, Comic Sports Relief have agreed to fund a training program so that we can train activities managers or anybody to become table tennis sports therapists. And we're developing a whole range of activities like the clocks, like techniques for warming up. We've got some rather smart designers who are working on designing special bats for us, for dementia players. They'll have much more tactile handles. They'll have wrist grips. They may be lighter, they may be larger. And Tamasu Butterfly have said, well, what about the balls? Do you want to put patterns on them? So when they spin, they are more effective. So we're going to be looking at all these things. It's a, a, it's a beginning of a long journey. So, uh, and it's a very rewarding one. Thank you. I'll answer questions at the table if you want to come and play after, <laughs> after Barclays. I'm quite happy to do that. I'm hoping you all come and have a go, or at least some of you. I just have a question then um, about people you work with and how much are they contributing to the design of these tables? Obviously, a different version of the tables that uh, you're developing. So, how much feedback are you getting from patients that are only people in the back end of the design? Well, what we do is we've, um, we get Alzheimer's uh, players on the table as much as possible. And we're getting data feedback from all the care homes, the community centres and the hospitals. I mean, we're very fortunate to have the, both the Maudsley, who have created a special conservatory for one of these tables, and the Bethlehem, which, I mean, the Bethlehem was founded in 1248, so it's um, the original institution for the mind. Um, and we have, obviously, neuroscientist teams at King's College London who are monitoring the table, working with us. They volunteer their time. It's fantastic. Um, so it's an ongoing project. It's an ongoing project, and, we, and I'm really fascinated how so many people are keen to work with us and keen to help us and keen to explore the possibilities and play table tennis. Uh, I mean, I, I did go to a couple of the big Alzheimer's uh, associations when I first started this project, and I went to see one of the major research institutions, and I said, look, I, I'm, I've got some funding for research for this. Would you, you know, like to take it on board? And they said, at least it's drug-free. No, we're not interested. We only want to research drugs and medicines. And I went, oh, okay. So, but luckily, um, we've got an autonomous charity of our own. Uh, we've got funding to develop the table from Tamasu Butterfly. And we've got support from Bounce Leisure, which uh, helps fund the research. Um, uh, it's, it's a fascinating program of development. And it works. Do you have a question? Is there a question? Um, um, use of the table without the Alzheimer's, are there different illnesses or healthy people and benefits of people actually... So I guess, right. Have you done any studies or research around um, people without Alzheimer's or using the table? So are there any benefits of using that table? We see, yeah. I mean, the benefits are almost instantaneous. It's quite interesting. When you... When you we've had, um, for example, we put one of these into a care home uh, they had a gentleman there who all he did was just sit and stare out the window and never spoke to anybody. Now, Brian, um, who obviously the hypnosis class work, um, it, he managed to get this elderly gentleman to come to the table and got him playing, and he actually spoke. And the staff were in tears. It was amazing, you know. And, and suddenly, his demeanour changed when he started playing. So it... We're seeing immediate effects, and after about four or five weeks of regular play, uh, it, it's marvellous. What we don't want is to put one of these um, into a facility and they just use it once or twice or it gathers dust. I mean, it can be folded up and stored, but we're looking for uh, places that will use it on a regular basis. And what we're doing, I mean, we're working with people like Notting Hill Housing, um, and they're creating three uh, therapy hubs which will outreach to the community. 
which is fantastic. So we can get people coming in who are still in their own homes to play table tennis, which will extend their cognitive life so before they have to go into care homes and be drugged. So, yeah. so just to like, reiterate from my question, um, why not this actually like, done studies um, using the table with people who don't suffer from Alzheimer's, so they have different illnesses or um, are not ill? Well, it, it's, table tennis works for anybody. I, I mean, it, as I was saying earlier on, if, if, if I MRI scan your brain now, and then you play with Brian for 20 minutes, and then we re-MRI scan your brain, at least you will see, at least five more portions of your brain have lit up. I mean, if you could get companies to put table tennis into their foyers for their staff to play table tennis, they would enhance their work ethic and ability enormously, rather than those few cups of Starbucks coffee, 15 minutes of table tennis and you're there, you know, you're winning all the arguments in the conference room. So, I mean, I would advise people to play table tennis because it really does enhance the brain. Thank you. Clear question. I think just one more quick question. Just really short question. So, my question was just, uh, so if you see the effects after 20 minutes, how, how long do they last for like, longevity? So if you just stop playing it, how soon do they start tailing off? Like, so how long do you have to maintain? Well, it, it depends, obviously, on the person. Um, I mean, we, we had a, um, we have one of these tables at a thing called Demfest. Um, this woman brought her father over, said, could he play? Um, and he was really advanced Alzheimer's. And he started playing, and he was terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, and, but we persevered, you know. And then suddenly something clicked, and it was amazing. He, he actually started to play well, um, and he straightened up, and he was smiling. And he left the table with, with the, his daughter, who was, oh my God, you know. And the way he was walking, it was a different person. Now, depending on the person, that, that may not last for more than five, 10 minutes while the, the brain has been energized. But if you can get players playing regularly, this is the whole point about it. It, it. it does delay the onset of symptoms and reduces cognitive decline quite markedly. Uh, but you have to, to do it on a regular basis. But it will have an immediate effect. Um, and depending on the person, it will last for maybe 10 minutes or it could last for half an hour or an hour. But do it every day, works. <laughs>